Hello, this is John Buck. Uh, I'm going to show you an example today of designing a finite impulse response filter using a Hamming window and, and also how we would do this in MATLAB. Again, finite impulse response or FIR filters is often how we uh, describe them. Uh, to start with, we want to uh, re just remind you what we talked about for basic FIR filter design in class. We said the challenge for designing a low-pass filter is that the ideal impulse response is the sync function and the problem with that, we can't implement it, it's not practical because the impulse response goes on forever in both directions. So this is not a causal filter. And so one of the ways, a natural way we approximate that for a given length, if we have some length filter we want, is that we just truncate this. If we look carefully at the sink, we say that as n increases, the denominator is growing, and the impulse response would be attenuating overall as I go to larger and larger values of n. So I'll just keep the middle part where it's got the largest values and throw away the small parts, it shouldn't change too much. And so mathematically we express that like right here. And once we've truncated it to keep the central uh, m plus one points, we then shift it to make the filter causal, because we know a causal filter has to have an impulse response that is zero for negative time. So shifting the impulse response by m over two samples to the right makes it causal. And we saw in class this is a reasonable filter in that it makes a low-pass filter, but it has uh, a lot of ripples. And we also found in, in experimenting in MATLAB that increasing the length of m, you'd think that would make a better approximation, but it does not actually improve the ripple approximation. Making the FIR filter longer with this technique makes for a more uh, a, a crisper or shorter transition in frequency between pass band and stop band, but it does not make better ripple behavior. The ripples stay at the same height. So what we're going to talk about today, the Hamming window technique, is a way to uh, to re reduce the ripples, although we'll see it, it comes at a cost in transition width. So let me get a new page here and get back to my pencil. So again, the main topic for today, now that we've sort of reviewed what we were doing last time, is the idea of a windowed FIR filter design. Okay, and the main change here is really in step two, right? We saw last time the basic design, that if I take as M increases, the transition band is narrower, right? But also as M increases, the ripples or the error in the filter are unchanged. And that's what we want to address today. Okay, and so we say, well, the, these ripples are sort of like high frequency oscillations in the frequency response. How do we reduce those things? Well, we get rid of abrupt transitions in times. We'd like to and the natural approach to that is, what if we smooth the edges? If we go back to that approach on the previous page, this sort of truncation just cuts things right where they end. And if I make a, a picture of that, sort of a cartoon, when I truncated it originally, I might have a sync function that looked like this, where it's gradually attenuating. All right, so I've chopped it off here. And maybe this is right where it ends, at m over 2 and minus m over 2. And so I've got these abrupt changes on the edge. So here's my original truncated sync function. And these abrupt transitions on the edge right here, this is some of what's causing the ripples. This abrupt transition caused the ripples in the frequency response. So we say, well, what if I could smooth that out? What if I, the idea behind a windowed FIR filter design is rather than just cutting this out with a rectangle, I'm going to do what some people call tapering it. I'm going to take this thing and multiply it by a taper that makes the edges sort of transition smoothly to zero. And so what that means is, is I'll take this impulse response. I've, I've effectively changed step two. Instead of just truncating it, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to multiply it by what's called a Hamming window. So this is my window function that's symmetric. And again, named after Hamming, who discovered it. 
And again, it has the same range of values. So again, it, I, by multiplying with this finite length window that goes from plus or minus m over 2, I multiply these two together, and this gives me, in step 2, my, my symmetric but uncausal version. Okay, so what happens is instead of before, you can sort of think of what I had going on here. It was almost just like a rectangle, right? I just had this, I can think of truncating as just multiplying by this function that was 1 here and 0 everywhere else. The Hamming window transition, the exact values here aren't important, but I'll put them down. It transitions from 0 0.08 at the edge to 1 at the middle. So the stuff near the middle still gets its full value, but it's, it brings down, it attenuates these edges. And the, the equation for this window, W of n, turns out to be 0 0.54 plus 0 0.46 times the cosine of n times pi over m over 2. And then 0 everywhere else. So this is again in this region here. And then 0 for n above, or absolute value, we can say absolute value of n above m over 2. So either below minus m over 2 or plus m over 2. I'm multiplying with this function. So this is getting crowded. Let me pull it up on a new page. What that means is we end up in our filter design project process, rather. We end up with a new step 2 where we say the finite length but non-causal thing, h1 of n, we're now going to say is like taking the ideal filter and multiplying by some window w of n. Where again, w of n is that, in this case, we're just using what, what I had a second ago. So 0 0.54, this, this nice smoothly rolling off cosine plus dc offset. So this is true for Uh, minus m over 2. Ah, let me make some more space there to not make sure that's not confusing. Bring this over a little bit more. So this is true from minus m over 2 less than or equal to n less than or equal to m over 2. Getting squished again. And this is for anything outside of that range. And in fact, the Hamming window is just one of a lot of choices we can use. As you, as you study signal processing more, you'll find there's a wide, rich variety of windows you can use here. Uh, all which have slightly different trade-offs or performance. But the two most basic ones, or very fundamental one, is either just the rectangular window, which is effectively what we just saw by truncating it, or the Hamming window, which turns out we'll see to have very nice low side lobe behavior. And this is such a popular thing that this is, this is the default or built-in in MATLAB. So MATLAB, rather than having to go through the steps we saw in class last time, MATLAB implements this directly for you. You don't have to deal with all the, the shifting and thing. So in MATLAB, if we say h of, well, we don't say h of n, we just have h as our vector. Right? We say our impulse response is equal to fir1 is the command. And then we give it two options, m and alpha. And what this does is this defines a vector that's the impulse response that's already causal, right? So this is the impulse response to the filter that's been shifted to be causal from 0 to m, so it's m plus 1 points long. And it has a cutoff frequency of omega naught is equal to alpha times pi. So MATLAB does everything else automatically for you, though if you don't want to be overwhelmed, you should always have a semicolon after that. Otherwise, it will print every point in the H of n, and that can get to be a lot. So I, I have an example prepared here. Uh, so let me hop down screen to MATLAB. This is the, uh, the script file for this demo. And we can see here I have, I've defined, this is going to be, again, a 100 point, well, 101 point filter. And I've defined both the rectangular windowed version we saw in the last class, and then I've used FIR1 to make the Hamming impulse response. In figure 1, I've plotted that, that, imp, uh, that impulse response. So I'm using the same time axis from 0 to m. This is just the Hamming window 
impulse response. Let me pull that up for a minute so we can discuss it. And here, here's the Hamming window impulse response. It's not really a clear difference. I, I guess we could have had a second plot that contrasted the rectangular. But they both start going to zero. On this scale, it's not really obvious how different they are. But it still basically looks the same. It sort of looks like a sync function if you look carefully or if you've seen a lot of sync functions. You'd notice that it's decaying a little more quickly here. And then the, for the rest of the figures, if I go back to the, the script file, I've uh, computed the frequency response for both the rectangular and the Hamming window version. I've uh, then plotted them both on the same, I can use plot to plot both of them on the same axis where the Hamming is a black line and the, and the old rectangular is a blue line and then, and then put all the appropriate labels on. So if we go check figure 2 out, we see here's, well this is the positive frequencies from 0 to pi, normalized by pi. So here's my cutoff at pi over 2 and this really shows the emphasis. This blue rectangular, the blue dashed line is the rectangular technique we saw last time and it has the large ripples we saw, ripples that are almost 0.1 tall in both the pass band and the stop band. The black line is a Hamming windowed FIR with the same length and on this visual, on this vertical scale there's almost no ripple there. It almost looks like a nice smooth filter and then it rolls off. What we do see here though is that we have paid a price in transition width. That by smoothing these ripples it turns out the Hamming window needs a wider transition band if it has the same length filter as we have here. Right? Both these two the black and the, the blue lines come from the same length impulse response. So in, giving, in, in attenuating or smoothing out these ripples, the cost I've paid is that I've roughly doubled the width of my transition band. We can see the blue line gets down into the stop band faster than the black line, and also that it stayed up closer to one a little longer. We can zoom in on the uh, pass band and stop band. I have a detailed plot here again. And we can see on, on this scale, if you look very carefully here at the edge, you see just a little bit of ripple, but you can see how much further down the ripples are. And again, this one shows it in the stop band when I plot the magnitude of H. The ripples are much lower, uh, but, but visible. But you can see a, a great improvement in the ripples. They're almost uh, 100 times lower, it turns out, than the, uh, than the stop band ripples. So, and the last picture I'll show you, this was, again, the MATLAB made using the same impulse response, but now plotting it on a log scale on the y-axis. So this is in dB. I took 20 times the log of the magnitude. And on this scale, both of them look pretty flat in the pass band, but it really emphasizes the difference in the stop band, that the, filth, the frequencies I don't want to keep that I want to attenuate are much, much lower here. Right? There's a big gap in the stop band. I see the, the ripples here on the log scale are far below those for the rectangular window. Again, I can also see on the scale that the transition band, this also emphasizes the transition band is wider. Right, that the stop band, the, uh, the ripples are higher here, but I do get into that stop band region at a, a frequency closer to my ideal cutoff of pi over 2. The Hamming takes a wider transition band, a larger value of omega, until I'm in the stop band. But once I'm there, I have much more attenuation. Okay, so that's the, uh, the story for today. Just to, again, to recap, the main technique, main idea in the technique here, if we come back to the original FIR low-pass filter design technique, is we're changing this. Before we could think of the way we truncated it, it was like just multiplying it with a rectangular window. We're generalizing that more generally to say, well, what if I use something that's smooth at the edges? And I do that with the Hamming window. Whoops, wrong way. Sorry about that. I do that by multiplying this against the Hamming window. So I take my ideal sink and instead of just truncating it abruptly by multiplying with the Hamming window I've smoothed the edges made things uh, a more gradual transition to zero at the edges which removes the ripples in the frequency response and so and the exact formula Hamming window uses to do this is, is here but the real uh, payoff is the the FIR filter command in MATLAB already does this all for you. So it actually makes it simpler to design these Hamming windowed FIR filters. All you have to tell MATLAB is, is I want the filter to go from 0 to M, so how long the filter is going to be, and what the cutoff frequency is scaled normalized by pi, the discrete time cutoff frequency you want. Okay, so I hope that will help you move ahead. Uh, I'll, post, I'll post the script file on the class website so you can see all the M commands in detail. Run it for yourself in MATLAB. Play with using different values if you want. And I will talk to you next time.